One of the more frequently asked questions that I get is, Hayden, where did you get your seed money, right? This startup money to start your business. Let me walk you back through the grueling, some of which not so fun things I had to do in order to get just $800 a week. Hey, what's going on? Everyone, Hayden here, coming back at you with a brand new video. And in this one, I'm gonna be talking about three ways that I've personally done, plus three bonus tips at the end on how you can start making $800 per week without a job. Now, I'm someone who I've basically always considered myself unemployable. I actually have a t shirt that says it. Unfortunately, I'm not wearing it now. This one says same, same, but different. Anyways, um, if you take a look here, I brought this for prop. This is some nice, crisp, fresh bills. Anyways, Take a look at this amount of money. This is $800 in $100 US bills. It's very thin, it's very small, it fits perfectly. It, it could disappear in the wind very easily. It's a, it's a small amount of money, it's not a big brick. So how do you slowly start accumulating this, right? This little amount of money, even just one of these. I used to wake up every single day when I was 10, 11, 12, all the way through 15, 16, and I used to say, how can I make one of these a day? Right, that was the goal. So I was like, yeah, that's about $100 a day. You know, I was aiming for like $800 a week. That's what I ended up hitting after years of work. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the three things that I did consistently for multiple years that started putting cash in my pocket because if you're trying to use that money to maybe save for a new car or there's a, an investment you've been trying to make or you would like to save for retirement, put money aside for a rainy day, whatever that looks like for you, you need to be able to have the income coming in to support that. Again, it's not necessarily about how much you're you're making or spending, you know, it's it's just what you're doing with that. You know, I know people who make $100,000 a month and they've blown through it all, and I know people who make $10,000 a month and they have more money saved and they're a lot smarter financially than those people making 10 times what they are. So, the way that I think about it, your spending usually isn't the problem. Okay, now my good friend Graham Stephan might disagree to a certain extent, but in my opinion, okay, and I don't, I don't go crazy with my spending by any means, but if someone who's making $1,000 a month buys maybe a $3,000 laptop, that might not be the smartest move. But the problem isn't that they bought the laptop. That's not the core of the problem. The problem is that they're only making $1,000 a month. Right, so if you can figure out how to increase your income by a very large amount, then it allows you to do stupid things if you wanna do anything stupid, whatever you would classify that as. So in this video, again, we're gonna be talking about three ways to start putting $800 in your pocket every single week. If you guys want more topics like this, how to get started, how to get the ball rolling, and how to get cash flow coming in, and then how to multiply it, make sure you drop a like on this video. Let's aim to smash a 1,000 likes, and I'm gonna start putting out maybe a fun little series of myself actually doing some of these things Things. Again, haven't done them for years, but I know they work, and these are the things that allowed me to ultimately get to where I am today. I would not have been able to try 50 different online business ventures that all failed, that ultimately led to me finding the ones that work, and then going from that to another one in e-commerce, and you know, being able to accumulate a seven-figure net worth by the age of 18. So that's why, to me, this is really cool. I have a lot of passion around this because. I just love the whole finance game, okay? I love talking about money, you know, how to accumulate it, how to keep it, how to grow it, and what that looks like. I also enjoy having multiple streams of income, so that's something where I spend a lot of time working on that. I don't know, I'm just like a little nerd working in my lair. Anyways, before all of that, before all of it happened, there was three things I did, and now the first one that I'm gonna talk about is the most unsexy, you've probably heard of it, you don't wanna do it, but guess what? You need to get out there and do it. This is the one that started making me money from the time I was 10 years old and it paid me until I was 16. I would make more money working four hours a week for four months out of the year than my friends working part-time all year, 12 months. How did I do it? Through manual labor, okay? This is the number one. And now check this out. When you make money, there's a couple ways you can get paid. The way that I got paid through manual labor was like this, under the table, right? Which means I'm getting cash in hand, tax-free, every single day. I, I'd get paid weekly, regardless. They'd be like that. And every single week, I would get money from multiple streams. So check this out. The first thing I did from when I was 10, I went to my neighbor and I said, hey, I noticed that your lawn looks terrible. I, I didn't know how to talk to people. I'm like, it doesn't look that good. Do you have someone cutting it? They're like, no, the person quit on us. And I'm like, I have a lawnmower. I'll mow it for $10. Now, little did I know that $10 is way less than I should be charging for something that takes me an hour, an hour and a half, but when you're 10, that's a lot of money. 
Slowly, I started realizing that, well, my brother charged our other neighbor that takes him 20 minutes, he charged him $20. I was like, wait, I'd go to this person, I'm like, my rates have increased. And they liked it because I was doing such a good job. They're like, okay, how much do you charge? I said, $25. I never negotiated with them again. They said, okay, and for the next four to five years, I, I could have bumped it up. For the next four to five years, that person paid me in advance every single month before I mowed, which is a little bit different, a little unique. They would give me a $100 check, okay? And they would pay me for four times. So I'd mow usually once a week. Now, I started using that one person as a reference, as a selling point, and I would go to all the other neighbors. There's neighboring houses next to where I grew up in a little suburban town in Minnesota, who every single year, multiple times a year, I'd go knock on their door. Hey, you got anyone for this year? You got anyone for this year? And I was so persistent, and some of them continued to say no, others would slowly let me do it. So by the time I was, I would say 14, I had about five lawns that I was mowing every week. Again, just during the summer, right? It snows for most of the year, but are unable to mow. So it was like four or five months. Now I started making a little bit of money. You know, you, you add in a hundred bucks a month from this one person, you know, 15 bucks a week, that's, you know, whatever, 60 a month. You just start stacking them up. So I started making a couple hundred bucks a week. Just start bringing in a hundred, 200 bucks a week, right? Adding it up, again, cash. And now I'm someone where I didn't ever have anything to spend the money on. Like, what am I gonna do? I mean, I really wanted a jet ski, but I didn't have enough money for that. Regardless, what did I do? I started putting my money away, okay? I was stacking cash. And what happened is I ended up purchasing a lawnmower for $1,200, which seemed crazy at the time. You know, people thought I was stupid because um, you know, I was like 13 or something, but it was a big lawnmower. If you guys are into or know this stuff, it was a double deck. So it was like really wide and had two blades. Now, to me, it was simple math. All I had to do was use this lawnmower instead of the old crappy one. This one was twice as wide and it moved a lot faster. It had like a self drive. So I could mow lawns like 30 to 40% quicker and not even just from a speed perspective and the width. So I wouldn't have to do as many passes back and forth, which used to take hours. You know, I'd have four houses in a row. I'd go all the way down, all the way back, all the way down. So I was able to do that. Now this manual labor, I'm gonna tell you the other version of manual labor I did in a moment, but this was the coolest thing ever. And this is why I tell every kid who wants to make money no matter how old they are, even if you're 18, you can do this. You should be mowing lawns, okay? If you live in a place where you can do that or any sort of yard work, it's amazing. I worked on my own schedule. I've never worked a single job, never a day in my life. I was always working for myself, I guess, you know, for the client, but I was able to do it on my own schedule. If I wanted to mow it on Saturday versus Sunday, I would pick the day, I would pick the time. You know, I could listen to music. And then as I started getting more into the business world and realizing things and getting more clients, those, you know, songs started turning into audiobooks and podcasts. So I was learning as I was getting paid to work out because it was a workout. I'm out in the sun, you know, sweating, working out. So it was kind of cool. Then by the time I was about 15, 16, yeah, 15, I was old enough to start working for my friend's dad's construction company. Now they specialize in roofing and gutters. I'll tell you what, carrying three different 50 pound pallets of shingles up a 25 foot ladder onto a roof is not only extremely dangerous, but it's hard work. You do 40 trips, boom, 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 your shoulder's dead, your legs are dead, you are tired, out in the sun for 12 hours a day. But you know what? I started making about $200 a day by doing this. So I was able to kind of freelance, work with them, do my lawn mowing, and accumulate, again, put together some money, and then what did I do when I got it? I took it and I went like this. And what does that represent? This represents me using my money for something. Like I mentioned, I purchased a lawnmower. I deployed the capital that I had that wasn't being put to use, even 13 years old. Used it, okay, I had to use my, my dad had to come pick it up at the store, you know, with his truck. And I used that money to do it so I could do a better job, right, I cut the grass better, better quality, I could charge more. Got more clients because I had more time and it reduced the time by almost 50%. So it was a no-brainer investment for me and now all the other cash I started getting for the next two, three years, I started putting it to all these online business ventures. Okay, not BitConnect, but thankfully, you know, all these different things that slowly started teaching me skills, right? A lot of these things that they just took a lot of my time. I, I wasted some money in certain situations. I got scammed out of some money. And, you know, unfortunately, I could have made by the time I was 16, I probably would have had like twelve to fifteen thousand dollars in cash, except I had zero because I kept getting scammed and I kept, you know, not just all of the money, but I kept spending it on things that didn't work. But it was those things that didn't work that led me to find the things that did and slowly start learning and finding success. So by the time I was about 15, 16, I started dabbling with growing Instagram pages. 
Now, you know, I built up a couple hundred thousand followers on some meme pages, funny videos, dog pages and whatnot. And then I started doing affiliate marketing. So this is number two on the list, all right? Through those pages, I was able to do affiliate marketing. Now, I never heard of this until I saw some dude on a probably a rented private jet online talking about it and I was like, that looks cool. So affiliate marketing is essentially where you have, let's say you're Canon, right? And you wanna sell more cameras. Well, you tell me, hey, for every $500 camera you sell, we'll give you 150 bucks. Perfect. I don't have to deal with creating the product. I don't have to deal with hosting a website. I don't have to really deal with the customer service or the support or the shipping. So what I did, I started selling products online through my Instagram pages and I was able to be an affiliate. So I didn't know how to make a website back then. I didn't know how to do any of this and I didn't really have the money. So I started doing this where I would only get a portion of what I would sell. And because I had large audiences of people, I would go on the dog page that I had like 40,000 followers on and I would sell a dog related product. Right now I would get a cut of that. So I started banking a little bit of cash online. And I'll tell you what, I remember my first like $33 sale. It was really, really cool because that to me, you know, even though I'd spent like 20 hours trying to figure out how to get that one sale, it showed proof of concept. Something worked and it inspired me so much. So that for me is where I started doing affiliate marketing and I started selling software. Okay, and this was to, to business owners, to companies, and to other Instagram pages who wanted to just organically grow their presence online. Now here's the cool thing. I was jumping from offer to offer trying to figure out what would work and what would stick for these Instagram pages. I started making in my biggest month 17,000 and or excuse me, $1725 a month. I wish I made 17,000 a month back then. Things would be a little bit different. Anyways, I started making about 1000 to $1700 a month residually, okay? I would close a sale and that person would pay monthly. So combine that with my lawn mowing, here I am at about 15-ish, maybe just turning 16, and I'm making like 2,500 bucks a month, sometimes a little over 3,000. Now, I threw an extra income stream into the mix, and this is number three in the video, okay? The third one that made me the most amount of money was by dropping likes on YouTube videos. I'm just kidding. But anyways, you definitely should. The third one here is something where it's cool because you have no risk, okay? The only risk here is your time. And this is freelancing online. I started utilizing three main websites, freelancer.com, upwork.com, and fiverr.com. Some of you might be familiar with that, but I started doing things like designing logos, okay? I learned how to build Shopify stores, so I would do that, and I would do it for very cheap so that a lot of people would wanna pay me because you know, back when you have no money, what do you have? All you really have is time. So I was willing to spend a lot of time just to get 30 bucks, 50 bucks, because even if I did that every day, it would add more money, right? Because the affiliate marketing was residual. So it was coming in regardless. So I had a bunch of time, I started doing things like that on those websites, selling different services. It's kind of funny, nowadays I use those websites very frequently to hire out work. Because if I could get a logo on there for $10, it's really professional, it makes more sense for me to pay $10 than it does for me now to spend 30 minutes struggling, fiddling with the computer, trying to get a decent one. So for me, I'd rather hire an expert. That makes sense to me. And you know, I, I kind of recognized that from the other person's perspective back when I was the person being hired. So it was really interesting things. And those three things right there really helped me start making a lot of money. And at one point I was banking $800 a week for multiple months in a row via the affiliate marketing, the manual labor, which was primarily through the lawn mowing, as well as the, um, excuse me, as well as the freelancing. So that's something where the freelancing wasn't as consistent, but some weeks I'd make $300, others it'd be 100. But it was just consistent, okay? Just kind of, you know, no matter what, I'd make some amount of money. So all of that, keep in mind, I have zero expenses, zero. None of these did I have to pay for a software. If any of those freelancing websites like Fiverr or whatever, if they had charged $20 a month just to be a part of it, I would not have done it. I would not have done it. So I'm glad that they didn't, right? I only paid out of the cut that I got paid. So for me, it really opened up the door trying all these different things and being willing to, at the time, obviously I had no ego because I had nothing, but put your ego aside and just be willing to do anything. You know, there's no shame in working a job. There's no shame in going and asking your neighbor if you can mow their lawn for 20 bucks. I used to go door to door in the winter when I couldn't mow lawns. And I'd say, hey, I'll shovel your driveway for five bucks. It would take me 20, 30 minutes. I'm freezing my ass off. Why? Because $5 times 20 equals one of these, okay? And that's all I had to do. I would go knock on 20 doors and not everyone would say yes, but you know what? Most people would respect it. And fun fact, a lot of people tend to tip you. So that $5 sometimes turned into 10 or 20. Same thing with like a lemonade stand. Usually if it's $1, some people just give you five, 
right? They're like, give me two, I'll just give you five. So you kind of get, you know, people take care of you like that. So always, always be putting in the work and I'm gonna give you three bonus ones here in a moment that you can use that I wrote down for this video, but just there's no excuses. You know, I come from a suburban, you know, regular you know, background where we're in a, a suburban neighborhood. I had the opportunity because we had a tiny little lawnmower. I had the opportunity to go door to door, but I had to make that decision. And trust me, as a natural introvert, it was very scary going up to someone's door that I did not know to ask them for something. I'm an independent person. Part of that is because I'm an introvert. I don't like asking for help. So it was something that was very scary to me. It really was. But the potential motivation of financial gain at the time was worth it. And now it's not like I was working to, to buy something specific. I ended up purchasing a dirt bike, um, which was kind of cool. You know, I bought a dirt bike for like a thousand bucks, drove it for a year and sold it for a thousand bucks. So, you know, bought it right, didn't lose any money, had some fun. So I was able to do things like that, but just really it allowed me to have that cash flow to test my businesses. Right, which is what I knew I truly wanted to do even though I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So before we get into these three specific things, let me know if you've done any one of those down below. I feel like a lot of people have. Um, it's definitely you know, some great ways to make money. So I encourage you to do it if you're looking, you know, maybe if you're in the younger demographic category, you can totally go do these things if you're older. There are no age restrictions, right? The lawn mowing piece might be a little bit weirder just socially, you know, if you're 25 or 30 and you go knock on someone's door asking, but they don't know how old you are, right? You know, you can tell a little fib there or whatever. Just, you know, you can do the affiliate marketing and the freelancing stuff. Nobody knows who you are. So there's a lot of things like that you can try. Now, before we get into the three, all I ask is that you drop a like. Let's try and smash a thousand likes. I'd really appreciate it. It helps the channel grow and helps new amazing people get exposed to this content, which hopefully you're finding value in because I wanna make sure that we're spreading that to as many people as possible, all right? So these three things I came up with, I actually asked one of my buddies, I'm like, all right, you don't have a job and you need to make money. What are three ways, go. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, go, 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 go. And one of these he gave, which is a really good one, dog walking. I never did this, but apparently there's an app for it. He thinks it's called WAG, W-A-G. Go check it out, see if you guys can get into dog walking. If you live in a neighborhood or even an apartment complex or a city with a lot of people, I'm sure there's people who would wanna pay you $5 to walk their dog a couple times a week. That's an easy way you go with five dogs at once, you can start making some money. So that's a solid one right there. Number two, posting yourself for hire on Craigslist to help someone move or maybe build a desk or put together furniture. There's actually a big market for that. Amazon offers that as a service. There is a market for it. Might be a little sketchy going to a random person's house on Craigslist, but whatever, you know, do what you gotta do. And the third one, this is one I've only done a few times because it, was it wasn't really my thing, but you can go to garage sales with your phone and look up while you're there the, the used market price of like a dresser or maybe like a pair of hockey skates or whatever and see if you can negotiate with them, get a good price. Usually it's already way cheaper than what you could resell it for. Buy a bunch of it together, get an even cheaper package deal, boom, go resell that stuff on eBay. You know, you can't really do it on Amazon, but I, I used to do it on eBay and on Craigslist, okay? So focus on those things. Those are three great things right there on top of the three that you could do. There's plenty of ways to make money. I mean, I used to literally go on Google how to make money as a 14 year old. You know, I used to search things like that because I was curious and videos like this didn't really exist. So those are three ways I did it. And I was able to, again, I think some of the bills are on the floor now, but I was able to start putting you know, money in my pocket, which again, I wasn't using to just spend. I was putting it away for future use and for expansion of that income. Get your income up and then what you spend won't necessarily be a problem. That's the, the motto I live by. That's the rule I live by. You know, if, if you want something that might cost a little bit too much, it's not the cost of the item that is the issue. It is your income that does not support the purchasing of that item. Does that make sense? Some people agree, some people disagree with me on that, but in my opinion, it's logical and that's helped me expand. So, you know, I, I, I would love to own some crazy real estate. I just need more money to do it, right? So those are things I'm working towards. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, I'd, again, I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys went ahead and dropped the like down below. If you have any questions, any scenarios you'd like to play out and get some advice on, please do leave it in the comment section down below. I make it a point to read every single comment and give you a reply back and potentially even feature it in another video if it's a, a cool topic that I feel like a lot of. And for some reason, the camera keeps cutting off. But anyways, again, I appreciate you guys. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't already done so yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you went ahead and subscribed down below. Both that and the like button are 100% free. If you got any value, I'd appreciate it. And get ready for a new YouTube studio setup. All right, we're gonna be in a, a different location here soon. So make sure to stay tuned for that and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.